Hey everyone, it's Rajiv and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be giving my book review of the Indian mythological fiction novel by Kavita Kane called Ahalya's Awakening. Before I start talking about the book, I would like to say that I post book-related videos and reviews regularly in my channel. So if you enjoy watching this video, then please do like and subscribe. So as the title of the book indicates, the story revolves around Ahalya, who is the daughter of King Mudgal and Queen Nalayani. She is one of the most beautiful girls to be created by Lord Brahma to step into Earth, where even the Apsaras are in awe of her beauty. She is born as a twin along with her brother Devodas, and even at a very young age, she is extremely smart and she is very inquisitive about the world. As she grows older, she wants to devote her life to studying and gaining knowledge and she does not want to be married off like every other woman. When Devodas goes to fight the war, he takes the help of Lord Indra and the two of them become very good friends. After the war is over, Devodas brings Indra back home where Indra sees Ahalya and he suddenly falls madly in love with her. Ahalya is not interested in Indra at all and not even at the prospect of marriage in general, even though her family is pressuring her and persuading her into it. As an alternate, Ahalya goes to Gautam Rishi's ashram where she wants to learn more from him, but at the same time she slowly starts to fall in love with Gautam Rishi as well. As the story progresses, we see how this turns into a kind of a love triangle between Indra and Ahalya and Gautam, and how the choices that they make and the decisions that they come to affect each other's lives. To be honest, I really enjoyed reading this book. I vaguely remember Ahalya as a side character from the Ramayan story, where Ramayan touches the feet of the rock for his blessings and the rock turns into Ahalya. I really didn't know anything else about this character prior to reading this book. And after I finished reading this book, I went and did my own research on the original Ahalya character. And I really applaud the author for making this story so close in line to the original myths where Indra seduces Ahalya and she is cursed for infidelity. What was very nice about this book was that the story is very down to earth and the characters are very realistic. So even though you are reading an Indian mythological book, it doesn't sound too sophisticated or boring. What I mean by down to earth is that in the original Ramayana myth, we see Ahalya transformed as a rock. But here in this book, and this is a possible spoiler because it happens towards the end of the story, but in this book, the author uses the metaphor of Gautam treating Ahalya like stone, where he does not show her any love or compassion, and due to which she makes one mistake in the story where she is also thrown out like a stone where people don't even give a second thought about her. This is the first book that I'm reading by Kavita Kane, and I really enjoyed her style of writing. I love how she takes the mythological elements of the original tale and brings the characters and makes them feel more modern even while keeping with that tale. And at the same time, she imparts her own wisdom and knowledge about the injustice that women hold in the world and her own thoughts and opinions about how patriarchal the society is these days. Ahalya is a very strong character in the story and I enjoyed reading her a lot where she comes across as a very unique person who is independent and she wants to devote her life to learning and gain more knowledge. In my opinion, her only weakness, well in addition to her weakness at the end of the book, is that when she goes to the ashram, she loses her focus and falls in love and decides to become a wife and a mother instead. And unfortunately, it does not end well for her in this case, which I think is a very realistic situation that you see even in society these days, right? Where you see so many independent women who want to pursue their career and they want to be independent and make something out of life but because of the repressions of society they have to become someone's wife 
and then they become someone's mother and they in turn lose their own hopes and dreams. I also liked Indra as a villain a lot because you see how psychotic he becomes with his obsession over Ahalya and that he will do anything to get her. The only thing which I found a little odd in the story was how Gautam suddenly starts to lose interest in Ahalya. It was just very strange that after so many years of loving Ahalya and being an unhappy marriage, he suddenly decides to become grouchy and he does not support her in anything and he even stops teaching her. I mean, granted that she has become a mother and she spends her whole time taking care of the children and looking after the household things, and he is also busy with his own work and meditation and has focused on his life. But at the same time, even if he is not physically attracted to her anymore, he can still continue teaching her as his disciple, right? There is actually a scene in the second half of the book where he takes a walk with Ahalya to the river and they are both walking in silence where they don't know what to say to each other. And Gautam also contemplates as to what went wrong in their marriage and in their relationship for the situation to turn out like this. But yeah, I would have liked to see more explanation given as to why this happened. So in the original text, Gautam Rishi is seen as this very old man who is always focused on his life and his meditation and his works. So he never gives any importance to Ahalya at all. But in this book, Gautam is seen as this 30 something year old person who is very human-like and has needs and wants as well. And you can see how much love he is in with Ahalya for the first few years of their marriage. So it's just strange to see what suddenly changed his mood. Personally, I did not even like Gautam as the main character because he came off as someone who is too pious and snobbish, where he focused on his own work and achievements and ignored Ahalya's needs and did not even focus on the welfare of the family. The second minor thing which I thought could have been improved in this book was was uh, I would have liked to see Sachi's reaction to Indra's tactics once she finds out what he did with Ahalya in the forest. She becomes a significant character towards the middle of the book as Indra's wife, but towards the end of the story she just somehow disappears and is not even seen, which I thought was a little strange. But overall, Ahalya's Awakening is a very nice and very interesting book to read, especially if you are into Indian mythological fiction, and it's very close to the original tales, so I would give it a rating of 4 out of 5 stars. I'm very interested in checking out Kavita Kane's other novels as well, because I really enjoyed her style of writing in this book. And I have read that she mainly focuses on female mythological heroines, so that would be something interesting to read. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please do like and subscribe, and please do share your thoughts and comments on the section below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, bye!